Okay, what is this thing here? Yes, you've guessed it. It is what this is about, the discriminant. And where have you seen the discriminant before? In the quadratic formula. Yes, this thing over here. This is the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula gives us the solutions of a quadratic equation when we can't factorise it or be bothered to complete the square. So this part of it, though, is underneath the square root sign. And when this part of it is less than zero, we can't take the square root. Therefore, that would leave us with no solutions, no roots. So when it's less than zero, there are no roots. What about when this bit is equal to zero? Well, that means that that will knock that bit out, so there will only be one root. And what about when it is greater than zero? This bit, when it's greater than zero, then that means we can take the square root and we can have the positive and negative versions of it. So we'll end up with two roots. Okay, let's have a look at how this looks. So on a graph, here we go. So when we said there were no real roots, that means that it doesn't cross the y, the x-axis, sorry, when y equals zero. Um, so there are, in this case, this diagram here, there are no real roots. Okay, not crossing the x-axis. Okay, this one, this graph in the middle, you can see it crosses the x-axis once. So when b squared minus a, 4ac is equal to zero, there is one real root. We sometimes say it's a repeated root. The reason being, an example would be x minus 2 squared, y equals x minus 2 squared, would give us this, b squared minus 4ac of that would, give, would be equal to zero. And then over here, we have where you can see there are, it crosses the y-axis, sorry, the x-axis, the x-axis twice, where y equals zero, it crosses it twice, and therefore we have two real roots. Sometimes they are known as distinct real roots. Yeah. Okay, what kind of questions do we get on this? Here we're being asked to determine the nature of the roots of these quadratic equations. So first of all, let's est uh, establish what our coefficients are. We've, in this one, we've got a is 1, b is minus 5, and c is 4. So I'm going to work out b squared minus 4ac. So that will be minus 5 squared minus 4. a is 1, and c is 4. So that will be 25 minus 16, which is equal to 9. Therefore, 9 is greater than 0. So in this case, b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, which means we have two distinct roots, or two real distinct roots. This means it's going to cross the x-axis twice. That's my answer there to that one. Uh, this one... Um, a is still 1, B is minus 4, C is 4. I'm going to work out B squared minus 4AC. I've got minus 4 squared minus 4 times A, which is 1, and C, which is 4. That's going to give me 16 minus 16, which is obviously equal to 0. So in this case, B squared minus 4AC is equal to 0, which means it crosses the x-axis only once, so we have 1 real root. Don't need the S there. One real, one real root. Okay, we also mention on this next slide um, where you're asked to find the values of k for which x squared plus kx plus 9 equals 0 has equal roots. Now, so if it has equal roots, let's first of all write down what that means. That When it has equal roots, we're saying b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. Oh, I've got to find the values of k which make that statement true. So 
In this case, my A is 1, my B is K, and my C is 9. Okay, so I'm going to use this information here to help solve the values of k that make that statement true. So my b is k is k, so I want k squared minus 4 times by a, which is 1, and c, which is 9, and that's equal to 0. So I've got k squared minus 36 equals 0. So I'm trying to solve this now. It's already equal to 0, so if I move the 36 over to the other side, um, I want to take the square root of 36, taking the positive and negative versions of that, which means I have two possible values for k, it can either be plus or minus 6. So that's, so I'm using this statement here, writing down the expression and then solving it to see what values, you know, what basically what can the coefficient uh, of x be. It could be either plus 6 or minus 6. Okay, so that's the discriminant. Make sure you have these examples copied up in your learning pack uh, so that you've got a good set of notes.